So I think we're live. Hi, everyone. Yes, hello. Hey, welcome, everyone, and welcome to another webinar from uh, SESTEC. Uh, my name is Baran. I'm the marketing manager here. Uh, I have with me, as always, Anil, our pre-sales director. Welcome, Anil. Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here, Baran. Uh, we also have our lovely technology consultant, Tulin, with us. Welcome, Tulin. Uh, uh, hello, everyone. So uh, let me give a short intro, and then I will leave the stage to Anil and Tulin. Uh, they're going to chat about building smart chatbots. So at Sestec, we've been around uh, for uh, over 20 years now, and for the last 10 years, we've been working uh, on building chatbots, virtual assistants, speech-enabled IVRs. So today we want to share this uh, expertise, uh, our learnings with you. Uh, just to make things clear, this is not going to be like, uh, these are the ways to do it right, these are the ways to do it wrong. We just want to share our uh, findings with you, our learnings. These are going to be a summary of our expertise, actually, because uh, we, we built world's first Urdu speaking chatbot. Urdu is a language speaking in uh, Pakistan. Over 70 people uh, use this language. Uh, so we built, helped build uh, world's first Urdu speaking chatbot. And we uh, helped build a virtual assistant uh, for Archelic, which is a white goods company, a global brand, which is a Turkey origin company. We built their first uh, virtual assistant called Assista. So we have a little bit of uh, expertise in this area. Anil and Tulin is going to share with you uh, our hints. Uh, so if everybody's OK, Anil, the mic is yours. Sure. OK, thank you so much. So let me share my screen instead of you watching our faces for the next 25 minutes. Let's go with the Bye. nice presentation that we have. OK, so let's actually. So this, and just let me know when you can see my screen, guys. Yes, we got it. Okay, perfect. All right, thank you for the lovely introduction, Baran. And Tulin and I are here today to talk about some building smarter chatbots because some of you are our existing customers, some of you are looking for a chatbot solution, some of you are our partners and wondering how we are doing here in Sestech. Uh, building a chatbot that is not frustrating, you know, that is actually smart and can engage with the customers. So in the next 20, 25 minutes, we do have a very lovely content. And uh, this is going to be, you know, what uh, we are doing actually since uh, probably a long time. So this is the, cult uh, the accumulation of all the experience that we gained from our, you know, existing customers. So first of all, I want to kind of tackle why we need smarter bots, okay? So this is a, a real study, okay, in the US and the UK, and they've asked 3,000 people why they don't like the bots, okay? So uh, what they found is not quite interesting. It's actually, you know, this is what you would expect from a normal chatbot, right? 22% people said the chatbots are not intelligent enough, okay? So it wasn't enough for them to actually engage in a conversation found that, uh, you know, not so intelligent. The 32% of the people who got the survey uh, said the chatbots actually got stuck and they didn't know what to do, you know. So that's definitely something that gives a very bad experience. The majority of the people said when they needed to escalate the session to a live agent, they had to repeat themselves. And the remaining people, you know, gave uh, actually miscellaneous uh, reasons why, you know, chatbots are not actually satisfying and they're not giving the best user experience. So by just looking at this example, I think there is a need to go through a series of practices that we here at Sestec use to build the smart chatbots, okay? So we are gonna talk about them. But uh, uh, just a quick introduction, chatbots, speech-enabled IVRs or conversational IVRs, virtual assistants, they're becoming more and more popular. And we see them in every step of our journey as customers, okay? So this slide is just showing you that someone who would like to get a credit card, all right, to their research, their application, 
uh, and then they get a decision from the bank or financial institution, then they start using it. In all of these steps, they're interacting with a bot. Okay, doesn't matter if they interact on a IVR channel or on a text base, you know, inside the mobile application, but at the end of the day, they are interacting with these bots. So these bots have to be smart enough, engaging enough for the customer to continue this engagement on this channel. Otherwise, they're gonna switch easily to a live agent and they're gonna be calling the contact center like they do for the last probably, you know, 25, 30 years or whatever. You know, but we, we are trying to prevent this. We are trying to uh, bring some automation tools where, you know, with 20% uh, of the effort, we can solve 80% of the whole customer, you know, uh, problems or their inquiries without compromising the uh, experience that they are getting. Okay. But, oh, just a quick yeah. question. Your connection, can sure. you, uh, do you have a line connection? Because the, your voice is uh, not getting through. Can oh, you change no your for me? Okay. No, we got it, but uh, is your mm -hmm. internet connection strong enough? I was just wondering. Actually, it is, but let me just do one thing. Just give me one second, guys. This is the first time actually it's happening. All right. So let me just switch. Okay. And how is it right now? Is it much better? Yes, much better now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sorry okay, about so that. So you were saying, no problem. So you were saying we are actually, most of the companies are already using this uh, chatbots, IVRs, and speech enabled IVRs and uh, virtual assistants, but they are investing yeah. time and money on that. But when customers ignore, when they find these chatbots not smart enough, they go straight to agents. So. It's a waste of time and money for the uh, companies and it's yeah. bad experiences for the customers. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And this is why we are trying to build a smarter chatbot here. OK, let's take a look at this slide. Uh, OK, we lost some time here, but I think we are going to uh, just, you know, be OK in terms of why, in terms of uh, timing now. Uh, the chatbots or the virtual assistants, as you know, started with informational bots, okay? So people were asking uh, very simple questions and they were getting these basic answers. So in that case, the user experience wasn't that enough, uh, wasn't that important because, you know, nobody cared about their user interface because they weren't doing a complicated process. They were just asking a simple question. Later, these chatbots got a little bit personalized, meaning that they could get information from the backend system, from CRM system, and they actually could say your names. You know, they, they started to, uh, you know, uh, call with your name and uh, they became a little bit more smarter. And in that sense, the customer experience actually started to become a little bit more important than the informational, you know, bots. And today's world, you can do many transactions, many self services. And during that, you know, you need some guidance from the chatbots. And uh, this is actually where the customer experience gains its most important, you know, uh, role. That's why, you know, building a smart chatbot is going to be extremely important not to lose these customers, okay? So that's why we do have this uh, customer experience kind of going in a positive trend as your bots are getting more and more uh, complex, okay? So, so today, in the next 20 minutes, we are gonna be talking about four steps, okay? These are uh, actually almost real life examples that we uh, gain from real life customers. And to summarize them, the first one is to know your audience, okay? So your chatbot serves a certain group of demographics and you need to know who you are interacting with and design your chatbot per your you know, user base. The second one, intent recognition. You're gonna see with real examples why intent recognition is extremely important, okay? The third one is the dialogue flow, and the last one is respect the customer. Here, we need to respect and we need to adhere to the customer preferences, the way they, they want to interact with your chatbot, okay? All right, let's tackle these. But before we go, the tagline of this webinar is that you should be user-centric, not transaction-centric. At the end of the day, the customers 
okay their experience is what matters not the transaction that they are doing okay because they can do these transactions on different channels but the experience they get from chatbot is what will lead to a successful design and implementation all right now if you implement a chatbot and if people interact with it the first day or the first week and they say oh this chatbot is not working it's not intelligent enough then actually your chatbot is kind of doomed because this is the you know uh the word of mouth kind of goes really fast and people will start saying oh did you try the bot of this new bank it's useless okay so you don't want to especially do on the uh, social okay. media yeah especially on the social media so you've got to be very careful and the last one is that you need to engage your customers continuously you need to be proactive so even without waiting an input from them if you can push some relevant information, I'm saying relevant information to your demographics, to your users, that's extremely important. And once they interact with you, you don't want to lose them. You want to be engaged with them. Okay. So let's start with knowing your audience, number one. Okay. So uh, as you can see, Wall Street Journal's chatbot, okay, should not be the same as Domino's Pizza. All right. So there is definitely different group of people who are using these bots. Of course, there are some intersections between these two groups, but uh, overall pr uh, professions, age or geography is going to be a different, you know, uh, group of people uh, using these bots. So you got to uh, design your chatbot, uh, keeping this in mind. OK. The third example is where you're actually engaging the customer, okay? Someone is shopping for cars, all right? These, uh, putting a flashy sports car image is even, you know, it sounds simple, but it's actually engaging. It's inviting, all right? So you gotta know who you're dealing with, know their history and know their journey, okay? So that you can give them the best chatbot experience, all right? Let's go step number two, intent recognition. Now let's take a look at these examples together. Okay, the user said, I applied for a credit card or I want to apply for a credit card. And the third one is how can I apply for a credit card? Now from high level, these all seem very similar, right? But there are actually three different intents here. The first one is asking their application status. The second one is, is actually, you know, they're trying to apply for a card. The third one already applied. So there is a back, you know, history there. There is a journey there. Now they're actually trying to learn what's going on, you know, uh, and I'm sorry, uh, how can I apply? Okay, they're asking for loan application, not credit okay. cards. A totally okay. different flow, yeah. The first one is uh, where they applied and they're asking the status. I, I got confused. Yeah, but, the, the words uh, yeah. are similar uh, for each sentence, but the uh, intents are very different. Exactly. So these three intents from these three sentences, your chatbot has to know the difference between them. Because if you answer in the wrong way, to a question that the people are asking, uh, they are gonna immediately abandon your chatbot, okay? So intent recognition, the NLP engine behind your intent recognition is extremely important. So this is the first one. The second one is slot extraction, okay? What do I mean by this is actually, uh, you need to extract valuable information from what people are saying. So in, in the industry, they are called name entity, okay? So these entities, uh, denote time, number, date, uh, money, currency. Th those are all dynamically changeable variables, okay? So you need to understand what people are saying. So uh, on top of the intent recognition, you need to extract this kind of dynamic information. Do you have a table? at 8 p.m. for two people is actually asking you uh, to make a reservation uh, for 8 p.m. Uh, for two people at 8 p.m. tonight, okay? Uh, I'm sorry, not tonight, but you know, there is no time given, but actually there are two pieces of information that you need to extract. Now in the second example, a very similar one, but people used, instead of giving an exact date, they said tonight, all right? So your chatbot has to interpret this information and uh, convert it as a date that the machine will understand to make this reservation, all right? And then the last one is giving all of this information in one sentence, all right? So you need to actually uh, be on top of your game and understand this information, all right? So this is a part of the intent recognition. 
Now, Dialogflow is a little bit different because Dialogflow is actually the gist of your chatbot. How do you actually... This is the engage? brain of the chatbot, yeah? Exactly. This is where you actually uh, kind of go in a maybe, you know, in an engagement with the customer and your errors, your mistakes is, you know, you're, is going to cost your customer. All right. So let's take a look at this one. Only ask necessary questions. Now, if someone says, do you have a table tonight at 8 p.m.? They're trying to learn, you know, if there is any space left in your restaurant tonight, okay, 3rd of October at 8 p.m. Now, you got to understand the intent. You got to extract the information from this statement. But then if you need to ask another question to finalize the reservation, just ask this one, okay, uh, while keeping the information that is already provided. It's a very bad, uh, you know, uh, method to ask the information that is already given to you again to the customer. Okay, so the bot says, "Sure, how many for how many people?" and they will just say two. All right. Some bots, and I've seen this, uh, they don't understand the answer two because they are not context dependent. They cannot actually me uh, memorize, and they don't. They are not context aware. Okay, because that two can denote anything in the world, but in within this dialogue, that two is the answer of the question, "How many people?" Okay, so then uh, you do the work for the customer. Your chatbot, if it has an orchestration tool, which Sestec does, all right, has to do this reservation for the customer. You cannot just, you know, say, I'm taking this information, but then you have to dial, you know, you have to call us again, blah, blah, blah. You just do it, do it, okay? Now, this is a similar example, but in a more dialogue flow way, all right? The, the, the customer using a banking bot, okay, they said, I would like to transfer 100 USD to Bob from my checking account, all right? Now, the bot again asks, okay, I'm sending this. I understand that it's a, a money transfer. I understand the intent, but I'm missing an information. Uh, I didn't understand Bob, okay? Again, here, your chatbot has to be dynamic enough to understand that Bob is a name, and it's probably one of the beneficiaries that is defined within your banking application. So when it goes back to the services to do this money transfer, Bob is just an entity there, okay? It has to uh, understand this. Any questions, Baran, so far from our audience? Am yes, actually, to... there's one. Mm -hmm. No, that's... Uh, give, give us an example, Tulin, from your expertise also. Maybe you just think and answer in a couple of minutes. What What is the hardest step on building a chatbot? So keep that in mind. Maybe in a couple of minutes you want to answer from your expertise. What is that vital point that mm -hmm. everybody is having a hard time? Uh, yeah, so you yeah, can... I can answer. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. The hardest step Go ahead. is, uh, I think, that uh, defining the scope. Uh, because, for example, when we start a chatbot project with a bank, uh, these are the uh, transactions. For example, money transfer, learning the uh, loan status or card status. But uh, when you create a chatbot, uh, your customer can ask different questions. For example, how is the weather or uh, other uh, uh, unrelated uh, transactions or questions uh, with your chatbot. And uh, I think that the hardest step is the uh, defining the scope. Uh, should we create a uh, just banking bot or should we create a um, like a brand, uh, like an assistant? Uh, so defining the scope is a very hard step. And then when you uh, determine the, your uh, circle and then you can uh, continue step by step to um, um, create transactions or to create your prompts. I think Actually, in my just a small uh, addition to mm -hmm. Tulin is that we do have this expertise so we can help the customer to define the scope sometimes because they mm -hmm. say I need a chatbot but they don't have an idea about what kind of services or what kind of transactions they want to have or the you know uh, information they want to give on the chatbot I think this is important to tell that it's quite normal and we mm -hmm. can help there, you know, because uh, we can, we do have expertise in different verticals. So we can come and say, okay, this is a banking bot and probably you're going to have this, this, this information and the self-services mm -hmm. on your chatbot to mm -hmm. help you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got it. Thank okay. you. 
Okay, perfect. Now, dialog flow, the next one is instantly adapt to changes in the flow. Okay, let's take a look at this example. Someone is trying to make a money transfer, $100, and the chatbot understood it, all right? But in the last moment, the customer just changed their mind and changed the amount, make it 200 is what they are trying to do, okay? So you got to change only that relevant information. You don't have to start from scratch. You just need to change that information, okay? Just keep this in mind. All right. Now, one of the mistakes that we have seen on other chatbots is that uh, they're asking too many questions and at one time, all right? If someone is trying to make a money transfer and you, you need to have three pieces of information, don't ask them in one sentence because the customers usually will focus on the last one there, okay? And they're gonna uh, just answer to one or maybe two of them, but not all of them in the same sentence. So just go step by step. All right, I want to transfer money to whom? Mike. How much to Mike? $1,000. All right, uh, I'm doing the transfer. Just do it step by step. It's much more clear. All right, but don't forget in the previous example, a customer could have given all of this information within one sentence, one statement. Also, you know, uh, you, your bot has to understand this and, and the step by step also. Okay. All right. Now let's go to the respect the customer part. This is almost 2020 right? And there are still bots which doesn't understand the phone uh, formats, okay? It can be a date format. As you know, you know, in the US, um, it goes like month, day, and then year. In the rest of the world, it's the opposite of it. You know, it starts with the day and then month and then year. Also, the phone number formats, also the, the number formats, you know, whether you use a comma or you use a dot in the middle, you know, those are are different formats and your demographics can be using all of it you know so your bot has to understand the given information is you know what you're looking for and you have to understand these different input formats one thing you cannot do is you cannot force someone to enter it in a way that your bot will understand you have to accommodate the customer that's why we say it respect the customer okay do not guide the customers through a rabbit hole Sometimes we did this, okay, well, but uh, certainly it was our customer's request and we didn't want to kind of go and say we cannot do it. But let's say an application uh, takes about 12 steps to complete. Well, this might not be the best way, you know, chatbot is not the best way to uh, gather this information. Okay, you can easily guide them to an online form so that they can fill out the information necessary and they can do the application right there. Otherwise, it's gonna be like a rabbit hole and there will be some problems on the way. So if your flow is too long, then just uh, guide the customers uh, to, to the third party applications, okay? All right, now confirmation is something that these chatbots are doing. What is confirmation? Uh, if you ask something and the bot is, uh, you know, it understands, but it has to confirm this. Of course, there are things that, uh, you know, needs confirmation, such as money transfer, because it's important. So you can explicitly design your chatbot to ask this question, okay? So I'm transferring 100 bucks to Bob from your checking account. Do you confirm? And until you get a yes or, you know, any other form of word yes, you cannot do the transfer. All right, but if your bot is a virtual assistant and you're just setting up an alarm, you can just set the alarm. You don't have to ask it again. So please pay attention to this. But here, uh, there's a smart, you know, kind of a confirmation. Actually, it's a it's called hidden confirmation. Sometimes, you know, your your bot is actually doing the uh, alarm setting. But, and it's actually confirming it by saying, I'm doing it, you know? So you just see that, the, okay, the bot understood what I said and the alarm is set, you confirm it. If it is wrong, of course you have to change it, but this is like a, almost like a confirmation without asking you a real confirmation. I hope that makes sense. Okay. All right. Now, Probably we are doing a lot of mistakes when we are speaking. Uh, if we go back and listen to ourselves, we are just using, you know, abbreviations, slang words, and uh, while we are also typing on our phones to our, our friends, we are doing a lot of, you know, typos. 
Now, this is the same when the when the users are using your chatbot. So your chatbot has to know uh, different abbreviations or typos or common typos, let's say, that your users can do. You know, uh, in this example, you see that someone just forgot the letter I, but you have to understand it when they say credit card bill, all right? Or different from the typo, they can use some contextual abbreviations. So someone can say, I need two gig, okay? Or they say two GB. Well, if you're a telco, all right, uh, then you have to understand that this is a measure of, you know, uh, an internet and you have to just provide whatever is required there. You have to understand this request as well. So just adapt to the customer language. So I think that was the last in our slide before mm -hmm. I jump into the SESTEC part, but are there any questions, Baran, that we can answer before yes. we go in the mm -hmm. last few minutes? Well, Yes, our uh, audience is asking about this customer segmentation. Can chatbots, uh, you know, engage with customers from different segments, for example, uh, engage mm -hmm. differently with a high value customer and engage differently for a student, for example? Can we do that? Actually, we can do that. And even further, we can do it per different channels. I'll explain how. So, uh, our customers, you know, let's say a bank, they have also like uh, VIP customers or kind of a high value customers. They do have youth or maybe middle age or maybe olders, you know. So our chatbots can support different personality. We call them personas. And for the same exact question, for the same exact intent, we can uh, provide a different answer, different prompt to the user. And we need to just work with the customer to gain this information from a CRM system maybe uh, to understand what kind of demographics that user belongs to and answer accordingly. And one step further is also uh, we can customize these prompts per different channels. What channel I mean is, you know, someone might be using the website of the bank or mobile application, then your chatbot can be a little bit more formal than answering a question on Facebook, for example, because you know you can be a little bit informal, a sincere, yeah, bot when social media is being used. Mm -hmm. Okay, nice to know that. Uh, and spelling mistakes, Julian. One question for you: How do the chatbot understand the spelling mistake? Uh, actually, we are using some neural network based models uh, and uh, it's uh, understood when you uh, forgot some letters uh, and it uh, understood the concept and then uh, correct the words. And also sometimes we are texting, we can uh, write two different words uh, in um, Adjacent, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. and then it uh, understands these are different uh, words and uh, separate these words. And when you correct misspellings or when you separate the words, uh, and then you can uh, increase the accuracy rate of the intent recognition. Uh, and we are using some uh, neural network based models for that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think, did we answer this? The same chatbot platform can be deployed for a customer with different different websites, ah, different websites, uh, one of our attendants are asking, the same chatbot flow from for different website, can we serve different business units, yeah? Of course, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. yes. The answer is yes, okay. Yes, uh, using our state of the art, yeah, sorry, Julian, go ahead. No, no, we can use the same chatbot for uh, not uh, just for websites, for mobile application. For example, you are a bank and you have a mobile banking mobile application, mm -hmm. and we can implement this chatbot into the, this app. Uh, mm -hmm. There is no restriction. Uh, we should we have to use just websites. Mm -hmm. So these are just uh, like the channels. So we once we build a clever uh, dialogue flow. We can apply it to any channel. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. So one last question: Can we use voice? Yes. Not on the text, but voice. All right. So uh, Sestec is. Core strength is actually speech recognition and text to speech. So we've been doing speech recognition for 20 years, and I think we are very good at it. You know, in 11 languages currently, we are adding new support for new languages. 
but uh, we can uh, have a voice enabled you know chatbot as well because uh, we have actually done it uh, not on a chat platform but on IVR platform so people are kind of conversing with an uh, intelligent IVRs for a time now for I think uh, mm -hmm. five six years easily so uh, our chatbots can also be easily speech enabled mm -hmm. thank okay. you for the question yeah, so that uh, wraps up our today's webinar. Thank you to all of our participants. If you have any questions or if you like these uh, presentations, please email us at marketing at sestech.com. And thank you, Tunil, and thank you, Anil, for joining us. Sure. So see you next thank time, you so guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.